Branches. <laughs> you can tell it's Friday. Dear Branches, oh yes, it's, it's a Friday. And, you know, we talked a lot yesterday in the study about the treasuries of snow. The Lord has deemed in His wisdom to Hallelujah. pour out the treasury of snow on us these last two days. Amen. It's as we speaking, it's snowing outside, and it's yeah, October it the 20th. It is snowing beautifully outside. We thank you, Lord, for the snow. Although it is going to be gone by Sunday because it's supposed to be 17 here. Yeah. Praise the Lord for... It's, it's about a month too. For the seasons. But God knows. God thank knows. you, Lord God. You're still God in the snow. God in the rain. God Amen. in the thunder. And God that's exactly the... what we've been talking about, Andrew. Glory to God. Master of all of these things, because he created all of these things. Well, Lord, we we, 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 we that's all, folks. No, <laughs> we magnify your name this morning. You want to you want to tell everybody, Amen. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But do you want to tell everybody why you chose these particular songs this morning? Oh, because Regina, our dear sissy, is um, having camp meetings all week, and. Uh, well, had camp meetings, I guess today will be your last day, I'm not sure exactly, but the fire of God is filling our sister. Amen. The fire Amen. of God is touching her, touching her family. Amen. And we just believe today that it's going to spread out from her, what the Lord is doing in her life, in these meetings, and how he's filling her and touching her. It's going to spread out all around her to her family and to her neighborhood and wherever the Lord leads her. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we say, Lord, give us more. Fill us more. Fill us more, Lord. Fill us more. We draw near to you. You said if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. And when he draws near to us, we can't help but walk away with his perfume on us, with the essence of our God on us, right? Looking like Jesus and, and a little more humbled. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. A lot more humble. Amen. Because he is holy, right? Amen. Anyways, we, we magnet. I'm excited this morning. I'm excited this morning because God has been doing wonderful things in our lives. And we come with thanksgiving in our hearts this morning, Lord. Bless your holy name. He brought me out of the miry clay. He reached down his hand and he picked us up out of the miry clay Amen. and he set us on the rock Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He brought me out of the miry clay He set my feet on the rock to stay He put a song in my soul to play a song Oh, praise hallelujah When my heart was distressed He's Jehovah's dress brown And rolled in the pit Where my sins dragged me down I cried to the Lord To the deep miry clay Who tenderly brought me up That golden day Till the crown I gave Oh, he brought me out of the miry clay He set my feet on the road to stay He put a song in my soul today A song of praise, hallelujah 
who gave me a song Twas a new song of praise By day and by night Sweet notes I will raise My heart's overflowing Happy and free I'll praise my Redeemer Who has rescued me Sing it out! He brought me out of the miry clay He set my feet on the road to stay He put a song in my soul today A song of praise, hallelujah Sing of his wonderful mercy to me I'll praise him till all that his goodness see I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad Till men shall hear the truth and trust in God He brought me out of the miry clay He set my feet on the rock to stay He put a song in my soul today A song of praise, hallelujah oh, He brought me out of the miry clay Put a song in my soul today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Searching, 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 keep me fishing till the break of the day. Oh, sing, Hosanna, we sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Serving, 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 keep me serving till the break of day. Oh, sing it out! Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King. Oh, 
Give me peace in my heart, keep me resting. Give me peace in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah, give me peace in my heart, keep me resting, resting, resting. Give me resting till the break of day. One more time, we'll say. It's just those kind of songs. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Yes, we get up and Old we dance songs. before our King. Hosein, Hosein, <laughs> Amen. Now, Lord God, as we come around the table of your word, Lord, just bring it to life in our spirit. Show us the hidden mysteries that are there for us today, the treasures of your word. Anoint everyone who's joined this morning. Lord, with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you and we give you praise, Lord, for your mighty word. Thank you, Jesus. Ignite our hearts, Lord. Ignite us, Lord. Oh, Jesus, that our love would grow deeper for you. Our obedience, Lord, would grow deeper, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, because we love you, Lord. Amen. <sighs> you should never play those songs first thing in the morning. Your, hand, your hands and your voice. Voice, Hallelujah. Just don't. They're just not there yet. Those are evening songs. No, no, no. Those are all the time Those songs. are evening oh, songs. Turning my light on. Here we go. You can see me now. Can you see me? <laughs> I can see you. Hallelujah. But. You know, there was something. I'm a little bit out of the scene here, sweetie. No, 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 no. Of course. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're used to our, our, our slipshod presentations. So. What? They're not slipshots, honey. You know, just like keep it moving the camera <laughs> and then one of us goes out of the goes out of the picture. Like, where do they go? Like what's Joby, the, where are you, Joby? What is going on here? Okay, it is. We're excited this morning. We're excited we every day. Are Ah, some days are, are, um, takes us a little longer to get up and at her, but, you know, we, we, we do. But by the grace of God, right? But by the grace of God. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Okay, so, Job. 39 today. Let's see how far we get. There's no tact. No tact. Okay. <clears throat> we're all so yesterday ourselves. Yesterday we were talking Praise Jesus. God was beginning to speak. We finished the right. first chapter where God is speaking to Job in chapter 38. And God is dealing with these huge concepts of creation. We talked about everything from cosmology to astronomy mm -hmm. to volcanology to how the earth is made up. Uh, we talked about weather patterns. We talked about all these major Death. huge <laughs> things. The womb. Um, both uh, on the earth, below the earth, mm -hmm. above the earth. That God was pointing out to Job. All these things that, that God was responsible for. Not just... <coughs> 
excuse me, not just creating these things. But we have to understand this whole process. When we talk about God creating these things, it's a very complex process in that it begins with a thought in God's mind. That right. This is a concept that God has this, these, and this spoke, vision and he spoke, spoke it into it existence. And that's, you know, and, and that we get that both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that God spoke existence into existence so to speak or expose the universe into existence you know it, it just let fully formed um and that's what the bible teaches that's what we how we understand it to be um and regardless of science science's attempts to explain it away and uh, in other ways in in what they would term logical but um we have to be careful when we're using logic when it comes to god because God is the one that established logic. And it's God's logic, not our logic. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not the wisdom of man, but it's the wisdom of God that we need to be concerned with and that we desire. And, you know, and uh, this particular book being the very first book in the, in the section uh, in the Old Testament, which begins with Job and ends with the Song of Solomon being known as the wisdom literature of the Bible. That these mm -hmm. books, which include Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs, starting with Job, all have to deal with the wisdom of God, as you all That's probably right. well know. Mm -hmm. So yes. that being said, mm -hmm. now, again, here's one of those unfortunate chapter divisions. The 38 probably should have ended with... Um, verse 38 because it's kind of the verse 38 in the previous chapter was the one where it ended mm. with all these great again great um uh physical uh signs of the power of god in in the created universe and then he kind of shrinks it down now he's going to go through this whole section where he's he's going to bring job's focus down from the cosmology of creation and the the infinite expanse of the universe into the things that we see every day and and that's in the, in the animal kingdom 39 is basically a bunch of a few metaphors a list of metaphors and allegories and examples <laughs> of god's creative power in the animal kingdom so um most some of which we observe and some of which we don't but again always keep in mind that, and we kind of introduced it yesterday that it isn't it isn't the how things work because science can explain that it's why things work and where does it come from well we know it comes from we god. know it comes from god so we probably should have so 39 should have probably creator. started at verse 39 in the previous chapter because it says can you hunt the prey for lion because before that it's talking about rain and water skins and water yes. in the desert and earth, now wind, all of a fire. sudden and earth wind and fire that's a good way of putting it on. and mm. now it's talking now god is talking about the animal kingdom and he starts with lions mm. when he talked and you mentioned from yesterday the lions and the raven and and how you know that that god provides you know the food for lions and the instinct for lions to right. hunt for their young and right. you know the whole mm -hmm. food chain he's starting to introduce this that, that god is the one that, that conceived this god is the one that keeps it going god is the one that sustains it and so uh we ended with 41 who provides for the raven its prey when the young ones cry to god for help and wander about for lack of food right and 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 he in 39 now he he's picking up the same thing with animals so again they're probably the the the, prob, the the chapter division shouldn't be here but it is so and you said all that and i said all this to say eric can you start reading at verse one of chapter 39 the book of job chapter 39 do you know the time when the wild mountain goats bear the young or can you mark when the deer gives birth can you number the months that they fulfill? Or do you know the time when they bear young? They bow down, they bring forth their young, they deliver their offspring. Their young ones are healthy, they grow strong with grain, they depart and do not return to them. I think that is saying that the Lord provides for order and balance in nature. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> 
Yes, order and balance but in the animal world. I'm just looking up. Um, hmm. Because we, we don't know the ultimate timing of birth. Huh? Sheep. Does it say anything about the wild sheep? Uh, sheep and sheep. Yeah, hmm. okay. Sheep. All right. Psalm 104, 18. So, mountain goats. Sam 104. Yeah, I have that too. Mm hmm. You going to read it? No. Okay, I will then. The high hills are for the wild goats, and the cliffs are a refuge for the rock badgers. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so again, th this there's a confirmation. There's there's not going to be too much in this chapter where we're we're, we're you know we're going to be given a lot of thought about some of the things. This is just again. God is pointing to the observable universe. We move to the large things. Now we're going to the small things. You in the desert, you know about all the mountain goats. You know, you know that they, mm -hmm. you know, they exist in the mountain. You you don't know how they they do. You don't know how they cl clamber on the rocks with hooves. You know how do they do that? And where's where's the balance come from? Where how how can how can they perform this ballet? from peak to peak these mountains and with, with such skill and grace um and he says you look at these he says do you do you know when the calving begins now again the ancient people understood birth was also a mystery to them but they mm. understood certain things you know human they understood that human beings as we understand now that human beings don't have a mating season we made all year round. We have children yes. all year round. God said, go out and seasons. multiply. God said, multiply. <laughs> We're probably one of the very few species on the earth that God created that we don't have this. This this instinct is in us at all times. It gets us into... Although we can't get pregnant at all times. No, we can't. No, but we because can't. Because we have a cycle as well, right? As it, women. Exactly. But the, the this, this, this season of calving, the season where wildlife is procreating is reproducing after itself happens usually in just in a in a, in a certain time of the year mm -hmm. that god has programmed yep. into the species and the instinct kicks in and that's where their instinct all the fighting their, happens. The desire to mate <laughs> comes in but they don't have a desire to mate all the time like we do and nope. again they cohabit in peace they cohabit until peace. the mating season starts and then bang 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 She's mine. She's mine. And, and, you know, and they see all these <laughs> things. They see it in their own domesticated animals. But in this case, God is talking about, what about the animals that you don't see, Joe? But, you know, we can, mm. oh, I could talk to you about cattle, the cattle that, that you, that you had and, and will have once uh, will be restored to him. Mm. Um, I can, I can speak. You know how the cattle works. You know how your goats work, right, Barb? You know how they work. You know, <laughs> you know the seasons that they're in. You know who 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 programmed that into them? Did you do that? Did you tell them when to mate? Did you tell them when to eat? Did you tell them? No, no you didn't. I did because I created them. Right. It's just, <clears throat> can you number the months that they fulfill, and do you know the time they give birth when mm. they crouch, bring forth their offspring, are delivered of their young? Do you know how long they live? But then, do you know even when they are? Do you know when they get pregnant, Job? And do you know when they, because with wild animals, human beings rarely get to watch or see or observe wild animals giving birth in the wild. You know, it's always away yeah. from prying eyes of predators and, and other things. So it's funny you say the word crouch. Mine says bear, but bearing down. Yeah. And the Hebrew women used to crouch. That's right. They used to, you know, go down on their, uh, just that they used to give birth yeah, yeah. You, you know the the midwife would be behind the holding her yeah, up yeah. behind and then the other midwife huh. would be in the front getting ready to receive and same the, with some animals too same with like horses and, exactly and they, exactly the, the point being that god god puts this into and designs it this mm -hmm. way and his point to Job is, I designed it. Did you design it this way? Did you make the mountain goats do all this stuff? Mm -hmm. um, also in verse 4, it says, The young ones are healthy and they grow strong with grain. The Hebrew word translated with grain 
is also a rendering to in the open field. In the open field. Right. So they, they all have their place where they dwell, how they give birth, when they mate, the timing of the Lord is, yeah, verse, that he's put in all of creation, right, to, to work together. And verse 4 also mm -hmm. intimates in the same thing with human beings. He said, and you don't know how long the young remain with their parents before no. they go off. You know, and I send them off. They, their instinct is to go off and, well, you know, and this is the, we, we can think of as the parallel in human beings is what is, that's what I'm thinking of, is marriage is that a man and will leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and become one flesh. Well, when does that happen? Well, it doesn't happen when the, the child, the man or woman, it doesn't happen when they're seven or eight or 11 or 12. It happens when maturity has and and it's the same with all species. nowadays though it's not till they're 35 well, 40. yeah we, we want yeah, our kids to go go yeah, go it's a different go. way if you listen to yeah uh, we it's pastor, time to go now we had pastor uh, tim speak about that a few weeks ago about mm, how in our society now people are, are waiting later and later and that's not to leave home god yeah <clears throat> to do that because they're entitled <clears throat> right anyway anyway let's let's move yeah, on to move verse on. five and talk about wild donkeys who set the wild donkey free? Who loosed the bonds of the Onager, whose home I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling? He scorns the tumult of the city. He does not heed the shouts of the driver. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. Maybe not. And now God moves on to the wild donkeys. Yeah. So you, you know, you observe mountain goats from afar. Because you see them in the in out uh, up on the, the hills and stuff, but you know you you don't know you don't know the lives the, the hidden lives the secret lives of of the wild donkeys of what I've programmed them to do. Same with and and he said, but now here on the plains because I remember they live in the desert and on the plains you see yeah. these wild donkeys. These are not the domesticated donkeys no. that you use in your caravans, Job, and you know this. It's not your domesticated animals. This these are wild donkeys. And they, and, and he's saying, um, to whom I have given the arid plain of his home. Donkeys exist, and, and I guess all animals exist in the places that they exist because that's what God gave them. That's their kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's where he, he set them to be. That's where he set them in. And their, oh, yes, their instincts free, yeah. and their physical attributes are all fashioned uh, so that they can live in this the environments mm -hmm. that God puts them into, and he and he says to, uh, and uh, or uh, the the word there onager is is basically it's another uh, it's another word for a donkey, mm -hmm. and I think an onager, I don't know if it's in here, I think an onager is, oh mm. donkey, <laughs> I gotta look up donkey here, um. Hmm. Uh, my my belief is that the donkey is an onager is a cross between a donkey and a mule because donkey and mules are two different things yes they uh, are from what i understand a jackass <sighs> no jackass yes a jack but and an ass and, I'm to, but the domestic donkey is obedient sir um interesting about wild donkeys because it, it just pointed this out Re remember there is a uh, um There's i guess they're notorious for being stubborn and oh, being yes. independent and not needing anything else but themselves there's a very famous prophecy that in genesis that the angel of the lord appears to hagar remember when she's cast out by sarah mm -hmm. she's still pregnant with ishmael mm -hmm. and they give her the prophecy that Ishmael will be, you will have a son and he will rule over 12. He, he, he will, he will have his own kingdom, but what is he, what, what does the angel of the Lord call him? He will be a wild donkey of a man right. and every hand will be against him. And so that's, well, I, isn't donkeys come from a breed between horses and Oh, the mule comes between because of yeah, breeding horses and donkeys, I think. Donkeys, one of the first animals tamed by man. Mm -hmm. Wild donkeys refer Some to... Some y'all would know. 
Hmm. An onager, but it doesn't tell me as an onager. Okay, so onager is a dog. is a wild dog. He's just another name for a wild dog. Onager. Huh, I never. Uh, <clears throat> I've heard it before, before, but I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that. Not that hmm. The point being here that, again, just as with the mountain goats, God has given them their terrain. He's given them their limits. He's given them. That's right. He's fashioned them in a certain way that they operate the way that they do. And um, <clears throat> he says he's put them in an airplane and the salt land for their dwelling place. If you've seen donkeys, mm -hmm. I know I've seen all, all like horses too. They, they, they have those salt licks. They let, and cows yes, yeah, as well. Yeah, we used to have them to the blue bricks and the pink Yeah, and, 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 and you they know, need to lick that. They need mm -hmm. to lick salt. And so donkeys are the same way here. And yes. God says, I've made them that way. He scorns the tumult of the city. Of course, a wild donkey, anything wild is not going to come to anywhere near where there's a congregation of men, a congregation mm -hmm. of human beings. You know, it's, it's wild animals will stay far away. Although, you know, yeah. depending on the wild animals, you know, you know, we we have. Well, the more we take over their land, we we see foxes here bears, in our, on our streets, lynxes, and bears and lynxes, so wolves. As time goes on, you know that fear, you know that, and we talked about this with Noah that God said, "I will put the fear of man or fear of you in all the animals and wild yeah, animals." Yeah. But it also says you know, that one in of Revelation. the signs of the end times is the is the wild animals will stop. We'll, we'll they will lose that fear yeah. of of human beings, and mm -hmm. and literally, as Anne said, we'll we'll come after, come after you. the wild animals, right? Mm, you know, and and a lot of you can probably speak to that in your own in your own towns. You know, you know, we have had instances, instances. You know, I know where Instant we used to live in Hamilton, in Hamilton, Toronto area, which is a, a mm. municipal area of of well over two million people. A uh, suddenly in in one of the suburbs in Burlington, they have a coyote problem. Well, remember, we used to have deer. These huge, beautiful, majestic deer. They'd come right across the street on a major, major yeah. road and where there's lots of traffic. And they were just eating grass on my neighbor's lawn. And I took a video of it. And then I went out, kind of me thinking, oh, I'm just going to go up and pet one of them, right? They started... Taken off down the middle of the road. Yeah. The busy road and Urban cars were like going road. by. And we're not talking about a small town here. We're talking about a city of, you know, 600,000 yeah. people. I'm like, I'm like, Lord, please just take the fear out of them so I can just go near them. <laughs> but anyways. Anyway, and again, he's using the example of the wild donkey and he will continue to use the... Remember, these are examples yeah. of wild animals. These are examples of wild animals that man has domesticated. So we're talking about, you know, yeah. when we talk about wild mountain goats, we have domesticate, we have a certain, Barb can speak to this, um, of domesticated goat. We yep. have, a, a, we also have a species of domesticated- that like to eat dryer covers. Donkey, of donkey. <laughs> yeah, like to eat dryer covers. We have a domesticated species of donkeys. As a matter of fact, donkeys were one of the very, very first animals to be domesticated by man. Usually they domesticated the wild donkeys. So mm -hmm. um, same idea. And now in verse 9, he is now going to move on to... The and, and the driver here is a slave driver who's got his little twitch. And yeah, he scorns the tunnel of the yeah, city and the yeah. ranges of the mountains are his pastures. He stays away from the urban areas of mankind. He shuns man. Mm -hmm. Again, that goes back to what we were talking about, the fear of man. But that fear seems to be passing quickly. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and now he moves on to the example of the wild ox. Same idea. Now, oxen also have been domesticated, but it's they all started off as wild beasts right out, okay. of, right out of the ark. So, Eric, verse 9. Will the wild ox be willing to serve you? Will he bid by your manger? Can you bind the wild ox in the furrow with ropes, or will he plow the valleys behind you? Will you trust him because his strength is great, or will you leave your labor to him? Will you trust him to bring home your grain and gather it to your threshing floor? Again, here's this comparison between a wild animal and a domesticated animal. Yes, right. it's almost as if God's suggesting, yes, I've given you the ability as, as, as human beings to capture these um, these wild bees and put them to <clears throat> to domesticate them 
so that you may use them for your own uses in, in, in farming and providing food for your own families. I have allowed you to do this, but mm -hmm. I have not allowed you to do this to, to the exclusion of to eliminate completely the fact that they, they, are, be, they are a wild species. You know, you, whatever you think about the animals on the ark, were they domesticated? Well, maybe some of them were, but most of them were probably wild and they continue to be wild. And that's the origin of all our wild species today comes from those those uh, species and animals that were on the ark, and the, which is what we believe. It doesn't it say, though, in, in the New Testament, was it James who said that we can tame anything on the earth? Yes. Can be tamed except our own tongues. Down the tongues. Uh, I'm not sure he's using, he uses an example of wild animals, although it could be. He talks oh. about the rudder of a ship, and he talks about... Just as an example <laughs> that we can tame anything yes, on earth. That, yeah, and God has so, given us dominion. Whether they're go, wild or go not. Go out and have dominion over the earth, and that means not only just in the physical part of the earth, mm -hmm. but you know, with all the, yeah. the, the species that God has created. And we have. We've domesticated these animals. Mm -hmm. And God is going through all these things. And okay. he's... And he, <clears throat> And he said, is the wild ox willing to serve you? No, no wild animal is willing to serve a human being. But no. God has given it into our power to be able to, what we call, domesticate them for our own uses. Will he spend the night at your manger? No, because he's not domesticated. But those that were domesticated did spend the night at the manger and watched over. And we have many right. lovely Christmas carols to talk about cattle and oxen asleep. With it and watching over the manger of the baby Jesus, whether that was true or not, I, I suspect it is because he was born in a stable, mm. and I suspect that you know it was at night, so the animals were in the stable to keep warm, and that's what contributed to the warmth of the stable mm -hmm. itself for Mary and Joseph and the baby. I like what it says here. Or will he plow the valley behind you? We all know that they go before you, not yeah. behind you, yeah. right? Yeah, well, they will pull he pull the plow in front of you? You're right. And he says, "Will the oxen do it on his own?" That's right. Will he? Will he follow you? Oops, sorry. <laughs> will he follow you? No. But no. you have to. But I have given you the power. Can you bind him in the furrow with ropes? And will he harrow the valleys after you? Yeah, after you. <laughs> will he do it willingly? No. But I've given you the power to actually take ropes and domesticate him and 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 break him, as we like to say. Um, mm -hmm. and so that he will do your will. Mm -hmm. But will you depend on him because his strength is great? And will you leave him to him your labor? Yes. God and, and God has made this through this. There is now a dependent relationship. Man is dependent, was dependent on domesticated animals. We could not survive without doing that. Of course, a lot of the work of domesticated animals has since been taken over by technology um, yeah. tractors and stuff and, and engines so and, for the and Amish and the Mennonites well even then even then they're even using, then they're, using they're, tractors yeah. but but you still <laughs> see them riding down the road in their buggies and I said do you have faith in him that he will return your grain and gather it in your threshing floor mm-hmm well does he well, not the wild ox, yes, for not sure. Not the wild ones. Not no. the wild ox, but you you have to domesticate him. Ones. You have to you have to train him first, <coughs> and then you can expect to return, have this return for your grain, and and and, yes. and to to uh, harvest your threshing floor. You know, the, the oxen will bring in all the, the 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 grain and stuff to the threshing floor that allows you to thresh it, or separate the wheat from the chaff, and so you will have the kernels you will have the that the fruit of the wheat and the fruit of the barley and it's to create the food that you need um this is all part and parcel but the wild ox won't do this on his own because that's the way god planned and that's the way mm -hmm. god has designed it he said and can you you know it's almost like an inference here god's telling on can you do this just by thinking about it can you make the wild ox do all these things the wild donkey do all these things just by thinking about it you know on my, it, it came from the thoughts of my mind that these animals were to behave and to act the way that they do. Mm -hmm. so can you do that, Job? Obviously not. Oh. Okay, so, let's move on to 13, verse 13. Eric? The wings of the ostrich wave proudly, but are her wings and pinions like the kindly stalks? 
For she leaves her eggs on the ground and warms them in the dust. She forgets that a foot may crush them, or that a wild beast may break them. She treats her young harshly as though they were not hers. Her labour is in vain, without concern, because God deprived her of wisdom and did not endow her with understanding. When she lifts herself on high, she scorns the horse and its rider. And its, rider. it's interesting. It's interesting that um, God uses the metaphor of the ostrich because the ostrich is most like Job. Right? He's so deficient in his knowledge. You're, you're not even finished reading that yet. Yes, I'm done. Really? Yep, there's a break there. Oh, she scorns. Oh, right, you're right. I know I'm right. My mistake. Okay, It's ostrich. ironic that God uses the ostrich, ostrich because Job identified with the ostrich earlier. You may think... And, and it, they're so dumb. They're just careless and they're lacking knowledge. So God is kind of like ironically agreeing with Job there. I thought I would read this. I have it very... Right, honey? Yes, yes. And I'm agreeing. And, and this is going to concur with what you were saying because this is a dictionary of the Bible. So, um, and this is a very, is a very right good on. book. <laughs> and since Anne's talking about ostriches, and we are talking about ostriches yeah. here, the King James Version says owls. But I think this is... Ostriches is the, is the proper... Is the proper... Um, determination um, translation here because ostriches are a desert bird i'm going to read something about ostriches well, it we... says here in job 30 29 i am a brother of jackals and a companion of ostriches, of ostriches. again same <laughs> idea but yeah, i think you'd find in the king james version that it says owls companion of owls <laughs> um again king james version being uh, uh, out of out of the, this north, is the new king james. northwestern uh europe <laughs> Ostriches are not found in Europe. Um, those like Wendy and Eric, they tell you ostriches are found in Australia. They're found in Africa, but they were also found in Asia. They are also found throughout Asia, throughout and throughout the ancient Near East. So ostriches, Job and his friends would have been thoroughly familiar with ostriches. And let me re read you something about ostriches so that we have an understanding about in this particular verse. This is, this is what it says about ostriches. Yeah, it does say owls. Several scripture passages that refer to owls in the KJV are rendered ostrich in the RSV. That is mm -hmm. what we just said. There. Yeah. This strange bird, and I think we all agree that it's a strange Very strange. Bird, they hide their heads in the sand. Uh, is a common sight in the deserts of Israel and Sinai in Bible times. Now, you may not mm -hmm. realize that. I know I didn't realize that, but ostriches were... And they actually hunted them like they hunted lions. Like they don't now because there's no ostriches there. But Earth's largest living bird. Um, the is. ostrich may stand about 2.5 meters, which is about 8 feet tall. While it cannot fly, this unusual animal with its long steps, which can cover 15 feet per stride at top wow. speed, can outrun a horse, which is exactly what this says. Mm. We'll go back to that. Sometimes an ostrich will use its wings as a sail to achieve even greater speed. Mm -hmm. That's why you see them going like this. That's true, hon. That's yeah. exactly why you see them. Yeah, Makes them more aerodynamic. An adult ostrich fears only man and lions. Mm. And it may live as long as 70 years. So it's a very long living sure. bird. It almost lives as long as Imagine a man. Imagine having a pet ostrich. <laughs> They can the kill you too. The popular belief that ostriches hide their heads in the sand is... Like I just said, not, not true. true. However, when a young ostrich sees, <laughs> senses but danger... But they're dumb. <laughs> it will crouch near the ground and stretch out its long neck to lessen the possibility of being seen. Again, these are all attributes of this bird that God has built into it when he created the ostrich. You know, we understand how, we're reading about how, but why did God create an ostrich? Is it a for, coaster? for his good pleasure. This enormous bird has only a walnut-sized brain. But God has given it certain helpful Peanut instincts, brain. along with its great physical stamina. 
Like a camel, the ostrich is fitted for desert life. Remember, we're talking about desert people here. They would have been familiar with the you ostrich. They drink a lot of water. They would have been familiar. It eats coarse food and can go for a long time without water. Its mm -hmm. head, neck, and powerful legs have no feathers. This helps keep the bird cool in the hot desert climate. Its huge eyes enable it to spot danger from a great distance, and its long eyelashes protect its eyes from the dust and the sand. The male ostrich has a cry that is similar. Get to this. A male ostrich has a cry that is similar to a lion's roar. Yes, I read that. And Actually. unlike most other birds, the ostrich does not build a nest to protect its young. The female ostrich deposits her eggs on the desert floor and covers them with sand. Yeah. These eggs are generally left unattended during the day since the desert sun serves as a natural incubator. Makes sense. Job compared these habits unfavorably with the more traditional nesting instincts of the stork. So going back into, that gives just a little background on, on ostriches because most of us don't know anything about ostriches. They're not very smart. They're not very smart. Hence, the walnut brain. <laughs> and walnuts so, look and, like and like Ann said, this whole idea of using the wings as a sail, yeah. Job, or God begins as he said, can you... You know, the wings of the ostrich wave proudly and they have the mm -hmm. pinions and plumage of love for she leaves her eggs to the earth. And we just read that. She puts it in the sand, covers it up. Yeah. It's a natural incubator. Well, who taught the ostrich to do that? Well, God did. Job didn't teach the ostrich no. to do that. God. He gave them programmed. all the animals their instructions. And lest them be warmed them. on the ground, forgetting that a foot may crush them, that the wild beast mm -hmm. may trample them. See, if they're buried under the under the sand they're also protecting them from anything walking across the top you know they're, they're free from predators she deals cruelly with her young as if they were not hers though her labor be in vain she has no fear because god has made her forget wisdom and given her no share in understanding That's right. the walnut sized brain you know they understood yeah. this now this doesn't say anything about the, the habits of what we just read the, yeah. the habits of uh, a female ostrich, a mother ostrich, you know, obviously she she deals cruelly with her young. You're probably going to have to watch a, doc, a documentary on that, exactly what an, a female ostrich does. I couldn't tell you what an, a female ostrich does, but obviously it, if you were watching, if we were watching this example, we would kind of come away saying she doesn't have a great maternal instinct for her young. Hmm. You know, nope. but again, God built that into it. And maybe that, you know, it's making her young strong to be able to survive um, from a very early age. And they do, they do tend to become very, they are very large creatures of the world's largest birds. So dinosaur like, um, dino, almost <laughs> dinosaur like when she rouses herself to flee, she laughs at the horse and the rider. Well, maybe she laughs at the horse and the rider because when she rouses herself to flee or the, uh, the, she doesn't the have any worries, she roars like a lion. And of course, and, and a horse, uh, a man and a horse would, if they think they don't see that's the bird and they hear a roar like a lion would tend to shy away to move away from Go the, the other direction. I'm roar, going this way, which is how lions hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what they do. I think we mentioned this before several uh, times very yes. quickly about the male they, they send the oldest male lion upwind and because he's got such this, this huge lung capacity, the toothless one the toothless one he roars <laughs> and the, the sound of it is so deep and ominous that it goes down that it goes down the wind yep. to where the prey is the and the prey of course the there. natural is you know fight or flee they, they flee away. They run from the opposite direction of the sound of the lion's voice right into where the female's pride is waiting yep. to kill them. Mm -hmm. you know? So, again, who taught lions how to do that? This is back in the last chapter we were talking about lions. Who taught lions how to, how to pray, how to hunt like this? Well, God did. God programmed them to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to be told how to do this. <clears throat> so, I'm a sure. Where are we at here? I'm assuming we're not going to get... Uh, 19. I'm, I'm assuming we're probably not going to get... Through. Well, maybe. We could have. Okay, no. let's, let's, go, <laughs> let's go quickly again. Um, we got to read this. 
Um, yeah, and this portion, this next portion, which is is about the horse, and this is quite a long. We could probably get through this. Well, so he's getting. Mm. Let's let's go verse nineteen. Have you given the horse strength? Have you closed his neck with thunder? Can you frighten him like a locust? His majestic snorting strikes terror. He pours in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He gallops into the clash of arms. He mocks at fear and is not frightened, nor does he turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the glittering spear and javelin. He devours the distance with fierceness and rage, nor does he come to a halt because the trumpet has sounded. At the blast of the trumpet, he says, Aha! He smells the battle from afar, the thunder of captains and shouting. All right, so the horse is probably the best, uh, next to a cow, is probably the best known domesticated animal by man. The horse has had, through history, has had so, we've used it for so many things, the horse for so many things. But mainly uh, as a yeah. symbol, as a symbol of warfare, as a symbol of power. Horses, horses, a majestic, powerful animal. Oh yes, and and God has designed it that way. That's a pretty, and that's why we get our word horsepower for yeah, our our good cars yes, and our engines. Exactly, and... that's a, and that's a good point. That's mm -hmm. exactly why we do that. And so God is telling, you know, Job, along with all the rest <laughs> of these wild animal allegories, you know, you know, the horse is a mighty animal, probably the, the strongest one that you know. And when we, when every human beings think about a horse, we, we, we can't help but think about strength and might and power in an animal. <coughs> he said, and he says to Job, did you give the horse that might, that power? Did you, did you make people think that every time they saw a horse, that's what they thought? Did you clothe his neck with that mane, that lovely mane, the different colors and just the glory, uh, like Paul says that the glory of a woman is her hair. So it's just the same in the horse. The glory of the horse is this mane, this lovely mane that they're reflected. Do you make him leap like a locust? You've all seen, you know, the horse, uh, you know, when we, uh, what do they call it? Equestrian events where they make them jump over all those. We know that a horse can jump over high, high, you know, high hedges and fencing. And, and he has the ability to leap and jump, um, and um, God is pointing out to you, can you make him jump like a locust? No, I did. His majestic snorting is terrifying, you know, uh, especially in battle when we're preparing for battle. Hearing, hearing, hearing those, yes, hearing the snort of, of the horse. Um, and it just seems to add to the tension in the beginning, you know, just the building up to that, uh, that point of battle. And this is, God is talking about the horse being used in this particular case in this way as an as an instrument of war he says he paused in the valley and exalts in his strength now that can refer back. to wild turn back. wild horses as well we've seen that but for the most part you know and just said you know snorting and pawing at the ground getting ready you know we we have all those images of of knights in the lists in the middle ages you know how the, the horses are getting ready and they you know they, they come and they pass each other same idea that tension the horse the, the just the behavior of a horse before battle or before any kind of contest just adds to the it just builds it just builds the intensity of the moment he goes out to meet weapons have you ever wondered you know we've we've seen these we've seen movies we've seen pictures and paintings you know that that men go out and they ride horses and they ride against each other and horses don't seem to be afraid they don't seem to be frightened of the weapons that the other, mm -hmm. you know, the enemy are having against them. They, they be, you know, they, they behave with the, again, James saying with the tongue, he talked about the same thing about a bridle and a bit in a horse's mouth, yeah. that this is this, that the, that the, the horse will be turned and, and in any, any way by the will of the rider. And, yeah. um, and and it's uh, particularly when it comes to this, we would all, you know, we're all, we would be frightened in the same situation if we rushing together in a battle. But horses don't seem to flinch at all. You know, they they seem to, you know, heedlessly rush into the the, the whole mayhem of battle without any kind of thought for themselves. You know, and I'm sure the same is 
and the same can be said about men, about human beings riding into battle. Mm. But we have the same thing. He laughs at fear and is not dismayed. He does not turn back from the sword. And that's exactly what we said. Upon him yeah. rattled a quiver. Quiver is where they keep the arrows. You know, so those are the horse archers who are, you know, some of the famous peoples in history, like the Huns and the Scythians, were famous as horse archers. They could stand up and they could, you know, yeah. Genghis Khan and his hordes, the Mongols, they were famous horse archers, where they could they could Fair. fire okay. our, their their arrows and their bow and arrows from, I'm um, standing up in, uh, on a horse and just the things that they could do. Um, but again, the horse would have to be trained to do that, to, to, to stay steady under the the rider so that, that he can loose his arrows. Um, the flashing of the spear and the javelin again, this, the sounds of battle, the, the horses don't seem to, you know, they don't run away from that. The only time they ever run away from battle is if their rider is knocked off and killed and then they run away. Because there's no control anymore. Sometimes the horses break their legs and <clears throat> they die as the well. The horses would die in battle as well, but yes. they don't. They, they go heedlessly into battle. With fiercest and rage, he swallows the ground. He cannot stand mm -hmm. still at the sound of the trumpet. You know, they're trained. Horses are trained. It's like men. The sound of the trumpet, mm -hmm. charge! <coughs> he smells battle from afar. And you, you see a lot of, um, if, if, you're, if you've read a lot of... Uh, stories about battles and medieval battles and ancient battles you know horses are usually the ones that sent the enemy first they sense that something is about to happen they god, sniff god the is air giving right us, yeah god is they giving can this sniff it in the air god is the giving scent. this kind of sense to them that you know they know when th certain things are going to happen and they could they have the scent of the other horses coming to them that's sure. true that's probably true you know there's probably they a lot of enzymes can, and you know there's a, probably that scent that too. The same thing that human beings give off when times of crisis, the same thing with horses. Uh, he smells the battle from afar, the thunder of the captains and the shouting. He just, mm -hmm. horses just seem to be inured for, for human battle and conflict. Mm -hmm. They just first, and, and God has made them that way. And God has allowed it that way. Let's, let's put it that way. You know, God has, well, he, he has allowed man to use horses this way. And I'm not, Again, personally. You're not an animal person. I'm not an animal person, but is God going to call human beings to account for the way that we use animals? Oh, yes, he is. It says so true. in the Bible. It does say so. Very true. And I think that's... Yeah, it talks about bad it isn't animal just, owners. You know. And it isn't just talking about dogs and cats. And no. It talks about the way we use horses, the way we use cattle. Our we oxen. Use all these and, things. Yeah. All the wild beasts, all the things that God created, we're going to have to give an account. That's true. Okay, let's finish really quickly. Verse 26, Eric. Does the hawk fly by your wisdom and spread its wings toward the south? Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? On the rocks it dwells and resides, on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. From there it spies out the prey, its eyes observe from afar. Its young ones suck up blood and where the slain are, there it is. Okay, so now he moves from the surface of the earth. We've been talking about wild animals, mm -hmm. the donkeys and mountain goats and to the horses, air. to the to the air. To, and now the of the look up, Joe. Look up and see the birds of the air. And he's yeah. talking about and he's talking about two he singles out two birds of prey here. He's talking about hawks. And he's talking about eagles. And mm -hmm. he says, Do you understand how the hawk soars and spreads his wings towards the south? In other words, we understand when we see hawks gliding in the air, we understand that there's funnels and currents in the air yes, that cause they the, use those. Cause the, the eagle and the and the hawk to, to do this majestic gliding as they're going over the countryside looking for prey. But they but they wouldn't have understood it that way. They just it just looks do you understand how the hawk and the eagle stays of in the air afloat that long without flapping its wings? Do you know that? And the eagle is the only bird that flies the highest, the highest in up in the air, and well, they certainly does that. Yeah, they do, and their eyesight is really good. They can yes. spot things hawks from too. way they, down. All these birds and are hawks. great, whether they be ospreys or whether they be falcons or or, or any of these kind of specific mm. birds. They can they can pick out a field mouse from like a mile up. Oh yeah. 
we would never be able to do that. But, but how is that possible? Because God created them that way. Mm -hmm. He created their eyesight like that. He created them to behave. They had automatic zoom lenses. <laughs> yeah. And this is the whole point of this chapter, using these examples of what animals. Why do these why do the animals behave the way that they do, Job? Because I I just made them that way. I decided and they all they all work differently. They all act differently. Because it is my purpose, to my purpose and my will that they do that create this great kaleidoscope of life upon the earth. It isn't just mm -hmm. you, Job. Do you have any idea? You know, you see these things, but do you have any idea what lies behind it? The thoughts and the... And he, he said, you know, you observe, you observe eagles and uh, that, that live in the cliffs and build their nests there. And this uh, verse 29 says what Aaron was talking about. From there he spies out the prey and his eyes behold it from far away. You know, this whole idea is the young ones suck up blood where the slain are. There is he. Again, I think that's talking about vultures. That's talking about more of yeah, vultures. Vultures. And, keep that in mind because the Middle East had a lot of vultures. And vultures. And, you know, and the Lord yeah. Jesus himself mentioned that. Uh, and wherever you see the vultures, wherever you see the wherever you see the vultures, there the dead bodies are. And he was talking about this is the, the flesh Olivet and... discourse, the the end of the Olivet mm -hmm. discourse in Matthew twenty four, I believe. Very an interesting observation, but very mysterious at times. Mm -hmm. and, you know how we how we translate that. But again, um, this idea that, that there's such a variety of life, there's such a variety of uh, in creation, Job. And I'm the one that created it. The I'm, eagle is very majestic compared to the vulture. Well, <laughs> yes, because the very vulture, majestic birds, amazing because birds. The, because the eagle, the hawk, the osprey, they they're all hunters, whereas these are uh, they're predators. And, but the yeah. vulture is is a um, what's the word it starts with P, honey? Predator? Not a predator. No. Oh. Um, they just eat dead things. They eat dead things. They eat dead flesh. Vultures eat dead oh, yeah. flesh. And I've seen a, a video mm -hmm. once. No, and then, and in this one it says the young, the eagles. Yes, they kill, but they bring it. They, it's dead by the time they bring it back to the young. So the young, in in essence, eat dead flesh. As I've well. seen a video once of um. There's different ways that the eagle hunts. They pick things up off the ground and they bring it way up, then they drop it. You do that usually with snakes. Snakes. And, but also I saw a video of them hunting mountain goats. And what they do is they fly close to to the side of the cliff where the, the goats are. They grab them with their talons and they pull them off a bit and the goats lose their footings. And then they, they crash down to the bottom and then the eagles go down and get them. That was very, I'm like, wow. wow. Wow, what a Again, strategy, all this, right? All this behavior in the in the kingdom. God put that in them. Wow, God to hunt. designed all these. No matter what we and might Job, think about. What them. do you know about that? Yeah, <laughs> you're like the ostrich. In you're, other words, you're deficient in your knowledge. Huh. Does the eagle soar at your command? Hmm. And the answer is no, Job. He doesn't. Mm -mm. He soars at my command because I tell him to do it because I've made him that way. <clears throat> Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for, you, Lord. Uh, again, the, <clears throat> the examples that you give us, Lord, in, in your creation, Father, about your majesty, about your sovereignty. Thank you, Lord. That there is none like you, O oh Lord God, that you are our creator, and you have created all things, Lord. And in you, all things live and move and exist have and have their being, you, Lord. Lord God. And Father, we thank you, Lord, Jesus, that we Jesus. are yours. Lord, you have called us to be your children. You have called us, Lord, to be uh, your people, Father Amen. God. To believe, Lord, to believe not only that you exist, Lord, but you are a rewarder of those that seek you diligently. And Father, this is what we're trying to do, Lord. We seek you diligently in the morning through your scriptures, through your word, Lord God, that we, we would see the Lord Jesus Christ high and lifted up. And sitting on the right-hand side Amazing. of power in every page that we read, Lord God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have been with us, Lord, that you lead us and guide us into all truth. 
We pray that you will continue to do so, Lord. You will continue to lead us, Father, into these these great truths, Lord God. And Father, I pray a mighty blessing upon all the brand, the dear branches, Lord God, and a mighty blessing upon all who will watch. And I pray, Lord, that uh, <clears throat> seeds will be planted, Father, by these. And, that we'll, and we are in faith, Lord. We believe that we're putting out these these studies yeah. in your word, Lord, the that, that we, are, we are planting the seed in your seed harvest. Of your word. That others will come and water that seed, but the Holy Spirit will get the increase to the glory of God to your harvest, Father. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for another week, uh, another week of looking into your word, of exploring, Father, mm -hmm. who you are. Yes. And Father, we give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He is the vine. We are the, the branches, branches, the family of God. And uh, we abide in him. Stay mm -hmm. abiding. And stay abiding in him because without him, we can do nothing, nothing as you all nothing, know. Nothing. So, um, again, weekend's upon us once and more. Have a great don't weekend. For, don't forget to join us for the Sunday night communion, as mm. always. We have a great time coming to the to the Lord's table, remembering yeah. the awesome work that the Lord did on our behalf. I don't know what the Lord is going to speak, but he we'll has see. a word. He has he a word for us. Always has a word for us, <laughs> brother Church. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get you better reference. believe <laughs> you won't get those references <laughs> and things that you know everybody she knows so you won't get those references. <laughs> anyway. until sunday night god bye -bye. bless bye, bye.